I want to go with lithium for my trolling motor, but I don't know exactly what I want. So I figured the best way to accomplish that is to do some live on the water testing. Don't worry, the battery's not in the box. It's not that light, I promise. So this testing should serve two purposes. One, it's just good to know what the amp draws are on my motor and how it functions so that no matter what battery I get, I kind of know how to manage it and what to expect for run times. But also there's a variety of sizes of batteries now and single batteries versus three batteries, 36 volt, 12 volt, and different amp hour ratings. So this one happens to be a 60 amp hour battery, which typically most people have gone with 100 amp hours. So I kind of want to see if this is enough to get me by for what I'm trying to do because it is a lower entry point in terms of cost. So I put it in the boat already. I'm going to go on the water, do some testing and see if it's going to work for me and maybe whether or not it would work for you. Well, what is up, Fisher people? No, I'm not checking messages on you. <laughs> what I'm checking is the app for my new, well, the battery that I'm testing out. We'll see whether or not I actually wind up keeping it or not. It is an Amped Outdoors lithium battery. It's one single 36 volt battery. And it's 60 amp hours. Don't know if that's gonna be enough or not for what I do. That's what we're gonna try to determine. And maybe you're trying to like look at batteries yourself and you're trying to say, do I need a 60 amp? Do I need a 100 amp? What's the draw on a trolling motor? What actually happened? Like, that's what we're gonna look at because the app gives you this ability to check all this stuff. Like for example, right now, I'm spot locked and I'm pulling only a half an amp currently. Point not, uh, now it's 1.1. So as it fluctuates, moving, wind, all that stuff. But I wanna check, so I checked it in the shop, just running the prop and I didn't know, I was thinking a five on a trolling motor, that's how fast the blade spins, that's how much amp draw it takes, and you just get what you get once you get on the water, but that's not actually true. When you do it in the shop, you can run up to a, like a seven and it's still only pulling two amps. It's not gonna do that on the water. So apparently it kind of adjusts for that or something. So that was interesting for me to know right out of the gate. But what I'm gonna do here is just run some tests, put the prop on, run it at all the different speeds, check what my amp draw is, if my phone will stay open. And that is the start of it. And then I want to see if it's different if I'm using autopilot, because if you use an autopilot, the motor head has to turn a lot. I want to see how much that affects things. All that good stuff, hopefully give you some good information. Because I was trying to look for this kind of stuff and it's not easy to find. And I did find like, you know, on the Minn Kota, at some point I found something with Minn Kota where it was telling like, the estimated amp draws at each level, but I didn't know if that was the same every type of battery you had. I didn't know if every boat was the same, how much it would vary. So right now I'm going out of one and we're going kind of downwind and I want to see if that makes a difference too. So downwind, I got negative 0.5, half an amp draw. We go up to a two, let it settle in. We got 1.4 amps, go up to a three. All right. Now we're pulling 3.1, let's call it 3.1. And it says time till discharged, 1954, 1955. I think that means 19 hours. So if you're running out of three, you could run this forever. Now we're gonna go up to a four. All of a sudden we're jumping up to 5.96. And it says we got 10 hours of runtime. Go up to a five, 10.4 and we got five hours and 45 minutes of runtime. So if you're running out of five, you're looking at under six hours on this battery with this boat, apparently. Let's jump it up to a six quick and see what we get. 16.1, three hours and 44 minutes of runtime. And a seven, that's as high as I would ever choose to go. And that's, you're gonna get two and a half hours, 23 amps of draw. You don't wanna run these trolling motors apparently more than an eight with lithium batteries because it can burn them out. You don't want to run it more than an eight anyway, because you just, and you also shouldn't run over an eight because you might burn your trolling motor itself. There's no reason. If you're going to do that, you need a bigger trolling motor. That's the bottom line there. So let's go back into the wind. There's not a lot of wind here. I don't know if it's going to make much of a difference, but I'm going to set it at like a five and compare it to what the other five was, which I don't know if I remember what the other five was right now, but let's just try it. Into the wind, five, 11 amps. It does look like it takes a little more. So even if you're running a five, a five downwind 
and a five into the win is is a different thing. It looks like native 10, 10 six draw going into the wind. Okay, fascinating. So if we're at 10, 10, four, 10, three, so yeah, it varies depending on how. The, so it's like it, a five. It has in its mind like what it thinks the speed should be, maybe to some degree, and it's trying to adjust for that. Now I don't think autopilot's going to make much of a difference because we don't have a lot of wind for it to adjust to. Yeah, it doesn't seem to really be doing anything different with autopilot. I don't know. If you had a big crosswind and it's doing a lot of adjusting, that's what I really want to know. And also, if you're spot locking, not only does it have to adjust the head a lot, but it cranks up the the amount of thrust a ton to adjust. So like every once in a while, I'd be running two, three, two, three, six to get back on the spot after a gust. So that's why spot lock drains your battery so fast. But like basically what I can tell so far is into the wind and downwind seem to be different things. And for this boat, if you start running at a five consistently for the day, you're looking at maybe six hours of runtime and that'll run your battery all the way dead. And I've been told that you don't want to run a lithium battery necessarily below 20%. I don't know that you really want to do that with any battery. I think lead acids even, it's like higher than that maybe. I'm not a battery expert. There's so much stuff out there and I'm trying to sort through all that myself. I'm going to spot lock here for a second to talk, but so five hours and 45 minutes of runtime if you're running at a five speed. Now granted, how, how often are you actually running with the trolling motor versus driving to other spots? You know, if you're gonna get almost six hours, if you spend a couple hours of driving around, graphing, going to spots, that probably gives you an eight hour day. If it starts to get a lot higher than that, you might need to start running the kicker to assist, which is something I didn't want to do with lithiums. I didn't want to use my kicker to assist, but with this battery, I might have to. And again, remember that that is till the battery runs dead, 0%. So if I want to get down to 20, do the math on that, you're basically looking at like an hour less than that, a little over an hour. So not 545, but like four and a half hours kind of thing if you're running out of five. That is gonna run it tight. And that's kind of what I expected it to be. I looked at some of these amp draws on Minkota. This seems to be pretty close to what their chart says. But if you're thinking about getting a battery, if you got a similar boat, that'll give you a feel for kind of what to expect. So it was cool to figure out what the amp draws are on the motor, but I think bottom line, everybody wants to know what size of battery is right for me, especially is the 60 or a 50 amp hour battery okay? And can I get by with that? So I need to provide you with a little context. First of all, this boat right here that I was doing the testing in is a Lund fiberglass 202. So it's a 20 foot fiberglass walleye fishing boat. Not the biggest boat in the world, but it's fairly heavy. So if you were running a much smaller boat, that would make this battery a lot more doable for somebody like yourself. Also, a lot of it depends on the style of fishing that you do, the area that you fish. Are you fishing big water, lots of wind, all that kind of stuff. If you're just doing trolling, and even if you're crankbait trolling and you probably are gonna run your kicker anyway. I think this battery would be great for almost any size of a boat. And I think in most scenarios for me, it's gonna be great. I think that the decision point that I'm really left with is if I'm spot locking a heavy wind, I think that's the big worry here. Like we saw in the testing, basically, if you're running out of five, you got about five hours of runtime more or less. And I think if I'm spot locking heavy winds, that is gonna run at that rate, if not a little higher, and I might wind up having to run the kicker a lot to assist. So in that sense, if you still don't mind running the kicker, this is a cheaper entry point into lithium batteries. If you wanted lithium because you like the freedom of, I don't have to use that kicker anymore to help no matter how windy it is, you might not get that with this battery, nor would I. One of the great things about lithium batteries was the fact that they pretty much continue their output throughout the entire day. It's very consistent. So that said, if at the beginning of the day in certain conditions, you're running your trolling motor at a four speed, if the conditions are exactly the same at the very end of the day, you're still gonna be running out of four speed. Whereas with a lead acid battery, typically the way those things drain is by the end of the day, instead of running out of four, all of a sudden you notice your motor's running out of six and then a seven and then an eight because it starts to lose that output capacity. And I think that's why that they could have this calculation on the app that actually shows the duration left of the battery because it's a lot more predictable because you don't have that petering out towards the end of the day. So I don't know, I'm gonna have to do some thinking. I'm still concerned about spot locking at high winds kind of days. 
I'm a little concerned about even trolling into the wind on high wind days. But if you take all that away, and or if you're not a fishing guide and you don't have to rely on it for your business, for $1,200, getting into lithium batteries and having a 10 year warranty, it's got a lot going for it. So hopefully this provided some helpful information if you're thinking about lithium batteries or you just want to know more about how your trolling motor performs. And if that insight was helpful, I'd appreciate you liking and sharing the video and maybe coming back to check out some of my fishing videos and all that kind of stuff. Thanks for watching, fisher people.